Welcome to Ochenta Stories, recorded in bedrooms, living rooms, closets, and balconies in quarantine around the world. In each short standalone piece, artists, writers, creators, podcasters, and more answer the question, what do you want to hear when this pandemic is over? I'm your host this week, Lori Martinez. Today's story comes to us from Cuba, written and performed by Hans Heido. Hija del Sol is a fable for the pandemic era. This audio fiction tells the story of the daughter of an indigenous tribe and her power to heal the world. This work, originally in Spanish, has been adapted into English, and you can listen to that version later on in the episode. And now, without further ado, here is Hija del Sol, escrito y presentado por Hans Haidu. Hola, Elio. Buenas noches. Habla Rodrigo, editor de la edición dominical del diario Mundo Libre. Tu trabajo de tantos años me llamó mucho la atención, así que te tengo una noticia excelente. Fuiste seleccionado para la crónica de la siguiente semana. Como sabes, es una edición conmemorativa sobre la pandemia de hace 10 años. Así que, mucha suerte y llámame si tienes alguna duda. Wow, ¡Qué noticia! Llegó tu momento, campeón. <risa> Llegó tu momento. Bueno, ya es hora de compartir esta gran experiencia que marcó mi vida. Han pasado cinco años desde que conocí esa historia. Recuerdo que estaba allá gracias a otros reportajes y documental que me asignaron en el Chimborazo, en Ecuador. Yo ya me había recuperado de la enfermedad. Fue una anciana ecuatoriana quien empezó a contarme la historia. Que en gloria esté. Gracias, anciana Carmela, por regalarme esa verdad que tanto estaba buscando. Voy a empezar a escuchar esas grabaciones. Mm, a ver, ¿por dónde empiezo a escribir? Mm. Lo tengo. Hace 10 años, el mundo enfrentaba una crisis extrema provocada por la temida pandemia del coronavirus, o COVID-19, como lo llamaron. En las islas de Hawái, nació una niña con habilidades espirituales naturales, herencia y legado ancestral. Era hija de médicos y fue criada por su abuela indígena. Se llamaba Tea. Tea, a los 12 años, empezó a sentir una preocupación que no podía explicar. El coronavirus estaba causando estragos en todo el mundo y ella percibía que algo malo estaba por pasar, cercano a ellos. Una noche, mediante un sueño, ella pudo visualizar que algo malo pasaba con sus padres que se encontraban trabajando en uno de los hospitales principales de Maui. Al día siguiente, la niña rápidamente le contó a su abuela sobre su presentimiento. Pocas horas después reciben la noticia de que sus padres están contagiados con el virus. La abuela sabe que no hay mucho tiempo y que solo la joven heredera puede salvarlos. Por eso decidió contarle a su nieta sobre uno de los secretos ancestrales mejor guardado de su familia. El ritual de la luz, más conocido como el beso del sol. Su abuela le contó que ese ritual salvó a sus antepasados en una similar situación, pero solo una hija nata del sol puede llegar hasta él. La abuela estaba segura de que Tea era una de esas hijas porque era el sol quien le hacía ver premoniciones en sus sueños. En tan solo unos días se alistaron para salir directo a la cumbre más lejana, al centro de la Tierra. El puente perfecto entre nuestro mundo y el mundo de los cielos. Esa cumbre está en Ecuador. Al llegar al lugar, vieron de lejos la cumbre del Chimborazo. Esa cumbre altísima que parece perderse en las nubes. Y cuando llegaron al volcán, un halcón se posa sobre el hombro de la niña y vuela guiando a la joven por el paso más ligero de la montaña. A mitad del camino, donde las condiciones parecían imposibles, una vicuña vino en su ayuda y montándola en su lomo, logró acortar el tortuoso camino a la cumbre. La joven llega y saca los utensilios para iniciar el ritual. Empieza a pintar en un círculo en el piso escrituras antiguas hasta lograr la total concentración y entrar en estado de trance mientras el sol va naciendo y parece fusionarse con la montaña, en el cual la joven parece integrarse al mismo
Un gran destello de luz, algo nunca visto, ocurre en el cielo. Rayos y una potente energía emana desde la cima, dejando a todo el planeta abajo este manto de luz superior. Total claridad predomina en el planeta. La luz llega a cada rincón tocando y penetrando todo a su paso, limpiando desde el interior y sanando. Unas horas después, todo está listo. Parece como si hubieran limpiado la Tierra. Dicen que el ritual de Tea se extendió por todo el territorio y que cruzó el océano. Por esas épocas, la pandemia también empezó a llegar a su fin y esta noticia trascendió como una leyenda urbana, como algo insólito de lo que hablaban algunas personas en Ecuador. Pocos creyeron en lo que hizo Tea. Y aunque quizás Tea nunca lo sepa, a veces pienso que su ritual también me salvó a mí. Here is Daughter of the Sun, written by Hans Hedo and performed in English by Philip Thorne. Hello, good evening. This is Rodrigo, editor of the Sunday edition of the newspaper Mundo Libre. I have some pretty good news for you. We want you to write next week's feature. As you know, it's a commemorative piece on the COVID-19 pandemic 10 years later. Anyway, how about it? Wow, this is great. It's my time now. Well, it's time to share this great experience that marked my life. It's been five years since I heard this story for the first time. I remember that I was there on a reporting trip for a documentary that was assigned to me in Chimborazo in Ecuador. I had already recovered from the illness. It was an old Ecuadorian woman who began to tell me the story. May she rest in peace. Thank you, old Carmela, for giving me that truth that I was looking for so much. Hmm, where should I start? Ten years ago, the world was facing an extreme crisis caused by the terrible coronavirus pandemic, or COVID-19 as it was called. On the islands of Hawaii, a child was born with natural, spiritual abilities, heritage and ancestral legacy. She was the daughter of doctors and was raised by her Native American grandmother. Her name was T. At the age of 12, T began to feel a nervousness that she could not explain. The coronavirus was wreaking destruction all over the world and she sensed that something bad was about to happen to her family. One night, she dreamt that something was wrong with her parents, who were working at one of Maui's major hospitals. <gasps> the next day, the girl told her grandmother about her premonition. A few hours later, they received the news that their parents were infected with the coronavirus. The grandmother knew that there was not much time and that only the young daughter could save them. That's why she decided to tell her granddaughter about one of the best-kept ancestral secrets of her family. The Ritual of Light, better known as the Kiss of the Sun. Her grandmother told her that this ritual saved her ancestors in a similar situation, but only a daughter born from the sun could harness its power. T's grandmother was sure that T was one of those daughters because it was the sun that made her see premonitions in her dreams. They quickly prepared for their journey to the furthest mountain peak from the centre of the earth, the perfect bridge between our world and the world of the heavens. That summit is in Ecuador. After many days, they saw the peak of Chimborazo in the distance. When they reached it, a hawk landed on the girl's shoulder and flew alongside her, guiding her to the least treacherous path up the mountain. Halfway through the journey, where conditions seemed impossible, a llama came to her aid and T rode the rest of the way on her back. Finally, she arrived. The young girl took out the tools to start the ritual. 
She painted ancient writings in a circle on the floor and then sat in the centre to meditate. She achieves total concentration and enters into a trance-like state as the sun rises. She seems to merge with the mountain and the sun at once. A big flash of light, something never seen before, happens in the sky. Rays and a powerful energy emanate from the atmosphere, leaving the whole planet under the mantle of a superior light. Total clarity covers the planet. The light reaches every corner, touching and penetrating everything in its path, cleaning from the inside and healing. It seems as if the light has cleansed the earth. The young woman returns to her grandmother at the bottom of the mountain. Both return to their homeland, wondering if they've achieved their goal. When they arrive, they go to the hospital where the girl's parents are, and they receive the good news that they are out of danger and beginning to recover. I heard later that T's ritual extended all over the territory, and that it even crossed oceans towards other countries. By that time, the global coronavirus pandemic was coming to an end, and news about T's doings transcended as an urban legend, as something fascinating and unusual. People only talked about in Ecuador. Few people believed in what T did, and though T may never know it, sometimes I think her ritual saved me too. Hans Haido is a Cuban artist and professional dancer. He is the director of the Zlibrium Cuban Art Project, which showcases visual and performative art in Cuba. He is also currently a dancer at the prestigious ballet cabaret Tropicana de Cuba. For more information about Zlibrium, you can follow them on Instagram at x l i b r i o u m underscore production. Special thanks to Philip Thorne for presenting the English version of this story. Philip is a Paris-based audio fiction producer and is one of the creators behind the Amelia Project podcast, a fiction podcast about an agency that helps its clients fake their deaths and start over. Thank you for listening to Ochenta Stories. We've received over 50 different stories from around the world so far. Our goal is to reach Ochenta or 80. If you have a story to tell. Send us a pitch to ochenta stories at gmail.com. That's O C H E N T A stories. We are now accepting stories in additional languages, including Portuguese. Follow us at Ochenta Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram for updates. And read more about the project over at ochentastudio.com slash ochenta stories.